Hi, everyone, and welcome to our presentation on putting chaos into continuous delivery to increase application resiliency. My name is Jürgen Etzelsdorfer. I am a maintainer of the Captain Project, and I work for Dynatrace. And uh, together, I'm here with Kartik. Hello, Kartik. Hi, Jürgen. Hi, everyone. So this is Kartik. I am the maintainer of the Litmus Chaos Project and work for Chaos Native. Absolutely thrilled to speak at KubeCon. So let's dive into the topic because we have a really exciting uh, topic prepared for today. So let's start with a typical CD process um, in a multi-stage um, delivery pipeline. You have your dev, your any kind of pre-production environments and finally your production environment. And what you already might use are some kind of quality gates um, that evaluate based on uh, performance and load testing the quality of your applications and only if those tests pass, you are allowed to move and move them to the next stage. This is totally fine, but in production, there is always something happening that you can maybe not foresee or you cannot really test. So there is one trend that goes into testing in production and basically uh, trying to break production and then getting uh, insights into what has to be improved. But today we really want to advocate for taking this idea and moving it to pre-production environments and not adding to your performance and your load tests, adding also chaos tests and evaluating them not only on performance criteria, but actually on resilience criteria and with moving and shifting left the chaos into pre-production environments to keep production, uh, let's say, a safe place and keep the green lights on in your production environments. That's the main idea of uh, today's presentation. And I'm handing over here to Karti to explain a little bit how we can evaluate resiliency uh, and uh, to take it from there. Thanks, Jürgen. Thanks for setting the context. Now that we've already spoken about chaos and the need for us to test it before deploying in production, let's look at why chaos engineering is important and what are some practices we can follow to improve the resiliency of our application infrastructure. Low tests are great, functional tests are great, but they need to be augmented with failure scenarios, especially so in a cloud native world where everything is in the form of a microservice, everything is loosely coupled. There is so much points of failure, the surface attack, surface area for attacks or failures are rather more. And it is important for us to test what's happening when the components surrounding our applications or business apps fail. If you look at this pyramid, for a typical application that you have deployed on Kubernetes, you have the platform services that could be cloud or on-premise. You have the Kubernetes microservices, Kubernetes being very dense. Then you have a host of microservices that you have from the cloud native ecosystem, the CNCF landscape for service discovery, for storage, for observability, et cetera. And then you have your application stack. There can be so many things that fail. And it's important for us to recognize what's happening when these components are undergoing failures. So failure testing is important. In other words, chaos is really important for us to inject and find out what's happening. Chaos engineering is a discipline, a very scientific one. And there are a lot of assumptions that we go ahead with when we write our applications or when we go ahead and deploy them. We assume that networks are reliable, the latency is always very less or nearly zero. We have infinite bandwidth, abundant storage and compute resources, but that's not always the case. We really want to simulate these conditions and find out what happens. There are some failures that you know what's going to result. We call them as known knowns, and it's important to do some kind of regression around that, some kind of chaos experimentation repeatedly to find out if that still holds true. But there are a lot of unknowns and a lot of assumptions that you want to validate, especially so in an environment that mimics production where things are really very dynamic and there's a lot of churn. Coming to the word churn, why is it important for us to do chaos testing continuously? I have taken this snippet from the principles of chaos.org where it is recommended for us to automate these experiments and run them continuously. Because we are going to have several versions of our software, several builds, several releases, it's important for us to run continuously. There are a lot of infrastructure changes that can happen. 
an underlying operating system or your Kubernetes versions might keep getting upgraded. And the best way to run things continuously is to put them inside of a CD pipeline. Exploratory and freestyle, a game day oriented uh, model of execution of chaos is really important. That's not to be done away with. That's really the nirvana of a mature chaos engineering practice, especially when done on production. But it's important for us to automate this and keep running this continuously on pre prior environments to find out whether really our services behave the way they do and we are confident. And whenever we do chaos engineering, whenever we do chaos experimentation, it is important for us to carry some hypothesis around what's the failure going to result in. How are my services going to behave? What's the impact on downstream applications? How is my performance statistics going to change? Is my user experience going to remain the same? All these are important. So you need to define what your service level indicators are. You need to define SLOs on top of that. And these are going to be very close and going to, con going to form what will be the service level agreements that you might have with your end users. So it's important for us to accompany or marry these checks along with chaos experiments every time. Now, coming to, we spoke about why, let's talk about how. In chaos, we want to go the declarative way now because in the cloud native world, everything is declarative right from the way you define your infrastructure, the way you define your applications, the way you manage their life cycle, the way you define resources or your policies, everything is done in a declarative way as YAMLs. So we want to do that with resilience checks as well. In other words, with chaos experiments as well. So it is important that we can define chaos intent via custom resources and use the same paradigm that is that of operators and controllers to reconcile these chaos resources and execute your experiments. And that way it's going to lend itself to a model where you can store everything in Git and also use the traditional GitOps controllers in your chaos flow as well. Let me introduce the Litmus Chaos project. It has been growing for some time now. It's a sandbox project right now. It's getting contribution from other organizations. And the chaos intent here is defined as custom resources. There are multiple custom resources, each serving a different function. And there is a chaos operator which acts on these and actually executes your chaos. And this tool or this platform rather has been built with certain principles in mind. You can see those principles on this screen. There are a couple of good blogs you can read about it. And this project has seen some fair adoption. Because of the way Litmus is built, everything being declarative and everything having a result or a verdict at the end of the experiment. You actually find out whether you met your hypothesis or around your steady state, whether you met your SLOs or no, all that information is captured in an experiment. Because of this model, it fits well into CICD pipelines. In the subsequent portion of this talk, Jurgen will talk about what the Captain project is about and how it leverages litmus to introduce chaos stages as part of continuous delivery pipelines. Over to you, Jorgen. Thank you, Karthik. So we are using two CNCF projects um, for this presentation mainly. The one is a Litmus Chaos and the other one is Captain, which is a cloud native application lifecycle orchestrator. That means it's not intended to replace all the tools that you already have in your tool stack, but actually to orchestrate them and to bring them together. Uh, the, the, the main power of Captain is to automate ways of your um, uh, parts of your organization, uh, such as observability, dashboarding, and loading, to set up, uh, for example, automated uh, dashboards in Grafana or um, loading rules in Prometheus Alert Manager. Another way um, is to automate SLO-driven multi-stage delivery, which is the main part for today's talk, uh, but also to automate operations and remediation, for example, to um, orchestrate remediation actions in response to alerts from the Prometheus Alert Manager. Everything is based uh, on declarative um, descriptions, uh, very well aligned also to other projects uh, such as Litmus uh, and stored everything in Git. Um, so we're following a GitOps approach here as well. So how can we actually um, use this and how can we set up now um, a project where we want to integrate Litmus Chaos into a CD um, workflow? In Captain, we are following the 
the idea of a captain shipyard definition and the shipyard definition is really the what you want to do and not so much how you want to do it. So it's basically a process and environment definition in YAML. Uh, you will put it in a Git repository and CAPT will act upon this definition. And in another concept, which is called the captain's uniform, you will then add the tooling that is responsible for each task, for example, that has to be executed as part of the shipyard definition. This separation of concerns um, via the how and the what is basically done with cloud events. So it's an event-based approach and captain will make sure to send the cloud events with all the information that is needed for other tools um, to, um, to act upon this. So for example, the deployment itself is not done by Captain itself, but Captain can use Helm, for example, to um, send all the deployment information to Helm and get the Helm integration will act upon this and will um, trigger them and will execute the deployment. The same is true for the testing. So it's not only that we can support Litmus tests, but also Chimita tests, Loka tests, other test integrations, they will wait for captain to trigger them. And then once triggered, they will execute their tests. The test instructions are stored in the Git repository managed by captain, will be provided to the test integrations, and then they can execute the tests. In the case of Litmus Chaos, the, um, the, the chaos experiment, the chaos test itself is a YAML file. It will be provided by captain to Litmus, and Litmus will then act upon this, will execute its chaos test and will then come back with a result to Captain. So Captain can, for example, in the evaluation phase, then trigger the, evalu the tool that is responsible for the evaluation. We're using here a built-in functionality of Captain, the Captain Lighthouse service, doing now the evaluation. So how does an evaluation look like? Again, here, it's a declarative description. It's based on service level objectives. And let me start here with the, um, with the second picture here on the left-hand side where we already have an objective defined based on an SLI, let's say the probe success percentage. That means what is the success percentage of all the probes we are sending within a given time frame, or that we are doing within a given time frame. And uh, we need it uh, higher than 95% of success if we want this objective to fully pass. If we cannot meet this criteria, Captain will evaluate the warning criteria. It has to still be it has to be higher than 90% for it to uh, receive half the score. If we cannot meet both the pass and the warning, captain will not give it a score and this one uh, objective would fail. How the data is actually retrieved is then defined in the service level indicator file. This is basically a mapping between the name of the service level indicator and you can think of it as a PromQL with placeholders so that you can easily reuse this for different services for different timeframes these kinds of things. So with these two files, we can go ahead and do evaluation. Either within the execution uh, of a captain um, shipyard definition, um, or also triggered uh, via the API or via the CLI if you're just interested in a captain quality evaluation um, ad hoc, let's say. Either way, once the evaluation is triggered, Captain will reach out to the different data providers, such as Prometheus, and we query the data that is used in the service level objective file. It will then score the data and will come back with a total score. And based on the total score, this microservice can then be, for example, promoted to the next stage, even to production. If it's meeting the criteria or the resilience criteria, for example, or it can be automatically rolled back or just held back in the stage depending on what, on what is defined in the shipyard definition. So this is the idea of how Captain Quality Gates work and how you can evaluate the resilience. It's basically how you define your service level objectives and which service level indicators you're using. We also have a demo prepared for this. What we will see in the demo is um, which application we're using and how all these different um, tools basically come together. But for the explanation of what we've done here and how we validated our approach, I will hand over to Kartik. Thanks, Jürgen. Now that we appreciate the need for chaos as part of continuous delivery, and now that you've learned about Litmus and Captain projects, let's talk about a simple use case, 
this is a way to illustrate how you can do chaos in CD using these projects. The diagram that we have here on this slide is essentially a representation of the shipyard that Jurgen talked about a few minutes earlier. So we have got three stages, importantly. One is the deployment stage, one is the test stage, and then it is the quality evaluation. As part of the deploy stage, we deploy a simple Hello World application called the Potato Head app. So this is a popular Hello service maintained by the CNCF SIG app delivery tool. It is deployed using Helm. That's the deployment tool of choice. And once the deployment is completed, there's a deployment finished event, which actually triggers the next set of tasks. One, a load generator, that's the locust, is starting to put load on the Hello Service app. So we want to do chaos when the application is actually serving requests, not in idle conditions. That's where we have locust. Then we use litmus, the chaos experiment and engine CRs are used to define a pod delete chaos experiment on the Hello Service app. As part of this, we're going to delete one of the replicas of this application, and we're going to identify what's going to happen as part of that. Before and after the experiment, there's a certain before we actually complete the experiment and give out the verdict. And then we have a test finished event that gets generated once this is done. This triggers a quality get evaluation. And as part of this evaluation, we're going to use metrics provided to us from Prometheus. We're going to have defined some service level indicators, which are essentially Prometheus functions on top of some metrics that's exposed by the applications and litmus and the tools that we have. And there are some SLOs defined as cutoffs on top of the values provided by this SLI. And we are going to evaluate whether those cutoffs are met as part of the quality gate evaluation. And once it is met, we are going to promote this application to the next stage, probably production, or we may go ahead and do a next chaos test or another, another important test. If not, then there's something that we need to improve either in the application or probably in our deployment practice. So in this particular demonstration, we are actually going to highlight an inefficient deployment approach. And Jurgen is going to take you through that demo. Before we actually get into it, let us spend a couple of minutes to, to detail the flow that's going to happen as part of this use case. So first, we are going to have the Potato Head Hello Service app deployed. It's going to be deployed with a readiness probe that has an init delay seconds of around 30 seconds. So it's actually going to take some time for this particular application to be ready and come up with an endpoint which can be queried. And then we have a black box exporter which is consistently trying to access this application and give us some accessibility information. And it's going to give us these two metrics, that is probe success and probe duration seconds. Probe success is an accessibility factor and duration seconds is an indicator of how long it takes for us to access the application successfully. And then we have the litmus operator and the dependencies along with the litmus service, integration service in residing in the captain control plane, which is actually going to help trigger this chaos experiment. The experiment itself is going to be a, a simple, graceful deletion of a single replica of the Hello Service app. We're just going to do one instance of this pod delete. And initially, we're going to do this against a single replica deployment and see that the SLOs are not really met. And these SLOs are essentially being built on top of these SLIs that are averages against the probe success and probe duration. We are going to see that this is going to be met when we have a multi replica deployment. That's what we're going to show as part of this demo. And uh, with this info, I think I will probably hand it over to Jurgen to talk us through the actual steps and the commands involved in doing this. Thank you, Karthik. Um, so for the sake of efficiency, we took all the screenshots of the demo and put it on the slides to skip all the waiting times uh, whenever the tests execute. So the demo starts with triggering a new delivery based on the shipyard file that we've seen earlier. Uh, and we are just going to um, deploy uh, one image. It's the Hello Server application, which is part of the Potato Head um, application. Once the deployment is finished, we are doing this with Helm. 
uh, and with a replica set of one in the first round of the demo, Captain will make, make sure to trigger the tests. The test definitions and the chaos definitions, these are all part and all stored in the Git repository of Captain and um, basically provided to the tool integrations here. So both the Litmus service and the Locust service will start the work. They don't even have to know uh, that the other service is running as well. Um, so you can just reuse all the performance tests you already have and, and add the chaos on top of this. Once the services are finished and Captain waits for both services to finish, the evaluation is started. So we can see here the Litmus service was finished um, successfully. Also the Locust service was finished successfully. That means they both did their job and indicated that it, during their execu execution, there was no problem. So in the evaluation, Captain is now reaching out to Prometheus and collecting the data. We can see the evaluation is failing in this case and taking a look at a detailed um, evaluation overview, we can see why the evaluation finished and both of our service level objectives actually did not meet the criteria. First, the success percentage was not high enough. We expected it to be higher than 95% for a full pass or at least higher than 90% for a warning, but we could not meet this because our application was not available for a given time um, due to our readiness pro, for example. It, took, it takes at least 30 seconds for it to be ready um, after it is um, deleted by a pod delete experiment, the one that we are using here in this demo. So what we can do to improve the resilience of our application in this case is to come up with the idea of a more high availability setup, increasing the replica account of this application. That would be one first good approach to do this. Uh, and we just rewrite the cloud event that we are sending to Captain and that will be then used as the instruction for the deployment in Helm. So we are just rewriting this file and adding the replica account of three to this, sending it to the Captain control plane, which will then forward it to Helm. Helm will do the deployment. Once it's finished, again, the tests will be automatically triggered. It will be the same tests. It will be the same integrations. Once the tests are finished, again, they will indicate back to Captain, it's finished. Captain, please go ahead and do the evaluation. And this time the evaluation is successful. We can even take a look why it is successful. And uh, we can see the probe success percentage is now 100%. And also the probe duration was fast enough. So 100%, why we could it, it achieve it to 100%? Because that's basically how Kubernetes works. If there are more uh, than, if there's one more, if there is more than one replica, Kubernetes will always make sure to send the traffic only to the instances of this application that actually are ready. And uh, if we are going to delete one of those instances and they have not indicated that they are already ready to serve some traffic, the traffic won't be directed to them. So the traffic was only served by those two other instances that were not affected by the pod delete test that we triggered with Litmus. So with this, we can evaluate already how to increase the resilience of applications. We have not changed anything in our application code, but we actually increased the resilience by tweaking the deployment instructions and having a higher replica set. This, of course, might be different for your applications, but this is just a validation of the approach that, and where we also have a continuous evaluation um, of chaos um, and the impact of our chaos tests on our application. So with this, we want to leave you with three key takeaways. The first one is we really want to encourage you to establish a process of continuously evaluating the resiliency, not only to do it uh, once or twice uh, via a so-called game day, but really putting this idea of a continuous resilience evaluation into your CD pipelines and having chaos tests in addition to performance tests. Um, I think with this, you can really increase the resilience of the applications and uh, having this in a continuous way, uh, it really gives the highest value. The evaluation should be based on service level objectives. They have proven to be a very efficient way to um, evaluate performance criteria, but also resilience criteria. You can even have uh, memory consumption or other parts as part of your SLOs and having a combination 
between more than uh, one or between uh, a, a huge amount of service level objectives gives you a very strong quality indication of your applications. And we've already seen what we are um, talking about today adopted by a company called Kitopi. They are using exactly the stack that we are also used for the demo. They're using Locust for the performance tests. They're using Captain for orchestrating them and for, for doing the evaluation. And they have added Litmus Chaos as part of their um, quality evaluations. And uh, they've already run those um, experiments and those tests hundreds of times, and it has already proven to increase the resilience of their applications. If you're interested in more, we have one resource slide here. So please visit us on litmuschaos.io. That's the project website of the Litmus Chaos project. On captain.sh, you will find everything on the captain project and how to use it. If you want to use the Litmus integration, you will find it on GitHub. There is even a tutorial how to use it. Um, the Litmus Chaos team and the Captain team have even teamed up to um, write a blog, a two-part blog series on this whole topic. So there's a lot of resources around this. Um, we really encourage you to make use of them. And you can also reach out to us. Our respective Twitter handles are here. And we are really uh, happy also to follow up with you on these topics. With this, I think we already can open up um, the question section. Thanks so much, so much uh, Kartik. It was really uh, a pleasure working with you on this. And uh, thanks to the whole um, open source and CNCF community uh, for taking part in this talk. Thanks, Jürgen. Enjoyed working on this. I hope this is useful to the Cloud Native community. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.